in the final analysis, it doesn't matter a damn what we think. The only thing that matters is what they feel and how much they feel. Hi, humanity. Welcome to my channel. This is where we talk about the higher principles that we are all governed by. And the patrons get a poll, and today's poll winner is how to act in 3D, impersonal versus personal. And this goes back to understanding it, it's no one's business, your personal stuff. Okay, so this all kind of ties in together. So when you're out in 3D and you're not by yourself, you know, you're talking to other people or texting or doing whatever you're doing, you're interacting with 3D. And you're to act like you're in a courtroom. The answers are yes, no, I don't know, fill in the blank. And otherwise you bite your tongue and you don't say anything. I'll give you an example. Let's say somebody had pulled themselves up out of a mess. They were doing really well. You know, everybody was so happy for them. Nobody was celebrating it. Okay. They weren't partying over it and giving this person that high that they needed you know, to, to continue forward. It was just, isn't it great? You know, and they were impersonal about it. So this person being asleep, then, you know, seeks the one who's going to stroke the ego. Okay. So now he's doing things that they've become aware of that are not cool. And they're not okay. For example, uh, somebody has made a deal with you that you will pick them up, to take them to work, and they're going to pay for the gas. Okay, y'all made a deal. You're going to pick them up, they're going to pay for the gas, and you're going to take them home in the afternoon. It's a deal. So you go to pick them up, and they're not ready to be picked up. They're asleep, okay? Now, they're usually out front, you know, ready to get in the car. They're not there. Now, there's two responses to that. You give them 15 minutes and you leave. Or you go and knock on the door. You know, now, if it's a family member, you'll probably, probably go knock on the door. If it's a good friend, you'll probably go knock on the door. But if you've been studying these laws, the correct response is you wait 15 minutes and you leave. Now you give them the benefit of the doubt, but you leave. They know they have responsibilities. They know how they have to get to work. So the next day you show up to take them and they're not there. Okay, and again, you have a choice. Wait 15 minutes and leave or go knock on the door. Well, if you knocked on the door the first time, you're probably going to knock on the door the second time because it's a pattern. You've fallen into the trap. Okay, so now you're going to knock on the door the second time. And they're asleep. And you're seeing other things that you really don't want to see. Okay? No. No. The person I know is not like this. No. So you turn around and leave and go forgive if you understand these laws you revise it. you see them as better okay you don't accept that you free them when you forgive them okay they're free to think for themselves so you have to stay impersonal in 3d and it literally is your word is your bond you are tied to your words okay it's a contract the bible calls it a covenant in legal terms that's a promise this is gonna happen okay <laughs> keep the covenant you know keep the promise which is you're gonna think the best of everyone you're gonna know it's god in your heart you're gonna know y'all are all becoming one and you're gonna know 
that it's already happened. It's done. It's over. Jesus ascended. And I am the Christ. Okay. I walk with God. Because I've studied and learned these laws. I've got gained this knowledge of what's going on here. So I don't fall for the traps anymore. There's no more pitfalls. When I'm out in 3D, I'm impersonal. Yes, no, I don't know. Fill in the blank. I'll give you another example. So what's your name? Rita. You have a last name? Yes. Care to share it? No. <laughs> you see how you're getting the ass Rita? To piss you off because you didn't ask what you really wanted. Hi, what's your full name? Rita Crabwell. You know, your word is your bond. If you're going to play Sneaky Snake, they'll play Sneaky Snake. Okay. And the sad thing is you don't even realize it a lot of the time you're playing Sneaky Snake. You know, hi, what's your name, Rita? Okay, and just call her Rita. I'm sorry, I never caught your last name. Oh, it's Craigwell. <laughs> you didn't ask them to give you their last name. You just stated a statement. I never got your last name. I'm sorry, I never got your last name. I don't know what's caught you. It's literally like you're on the witness stand all the time. And the Bible goes into this about witness and testimony and covenants. You know, this is a legal document. Trying to get across the fact this is a binding agreement between mind, body, and spirit. And we're doing this. Whether you like it or not. Okay? Because you are a divine being. You're the human incarnate. We call that the Christ. Okay? Some call it the Messiah. Some call it the Savior. But it's God's mind, heart. And soul inside the body of a man. He gave the man his mind, his heart, and his soul. Okay? And then the one who started this all, El Shaddai, binds them all up and says, Welcome to the party. Hallelujah. And that's the promise. The confirmation. You know, that... You are ready to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you know, that you are God in me. You're walking with God. You're talking with God all day long. All of this came out of God. And the personal is the role being played, what man is playing as these two minds, the man's mind and God's mind converge. Okay, they're being whipped up, converged. So you save your passion for the Christ, for when you're eating his body. Okay, when you're gone within, he's the sustenance of life. You go within, he's the one providing it all. And you praise him, thank him for whatever it is. You're getting, and he is the blood, the wine, the imagination, the creative force. You know, that is the blood that brings it to life. The bread and the wine, the two. They go together like peas and carrots. <laughs> Different, but the same. We're all human beings. And we all have our own way of seeing things. Because we all have our own God in our heart. And we have to trust that infinite intelligence is guiding all of us. Not just me, but everyone else, asleep or awake. You are impersonal to them because you do not know where they stand. You can only know where you stand. Okay, and you take a stand. This is what I believe. This is what I think. This is what my heart tells me is true. You know, and I saved my passion for the Christ. So if you're seeing something, you know, it should not trigger you. 
If it does, then that's something you need to forgive or revise. It should be, you know, well, mm -hmm. I guess that's what they think. You know, later, bless their hearts. I forgive them without distinction. You know, I know nobody really thinks like that. They're just being emotional. They'll stop and think about it, you know, and walk off. It's, you don't think about it anymore. But only you know what triggers you. Okay, and that's your passion. And you save that passion for the Christ when you're alone with God. And you, you give your passion to him. Oh, baby, oh, baby. You did great today. You showered me with all kinds of wonders. It's wonderful. I love my miracle man. My miracle man. Everybody was so kind and cool to me today. They were so wonderful. You know, you just make them all so wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, da, 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 da. Off you go. You save your personal. How you want your world to be. For the Christ. The passion you save for the Christ. And when you go outside, it's impersonal. You know, you present something is presented to you that is all you know it's not a bloody war it's a war it's a conflict it's not a horrendous murder it's a murder you know somebody took another life you know, that's all it is it's not a hate crime it's crime all right you broke the law what level of motivation was involved and that's how you are punished you know, you have to be taken out. You will, you are not thinking properly. You lost control. Those things are not allowed. All right. You're in the mind of God. Get over it. Those things are not allowed. So you save your passion for the Christ. Now, that's not to say that you don't correct others. It comes from your heart. You're a messenger and gift giver too. And some people need to hear it from you. Okay? The way you would say it. They need to hear that from you. So something will happen. And because you've been doing your Star of David exercise, you've been studying all this stuff and incorporating it into your life, then it starts to really um, take hold. And it, it, it just becomes automatic if you know what i mean it just comes trippingly off the tongue somebody calls up and says, hey you know i had a ride but i don't anymore can you give me a ride to work no why i really need to go to oh, i'm sorry that sounds like a personal problem to me i have other things i have lined up to do today and I don't have time to take you to work you know and this is how they learn you know you shouldn't have broken the contract with the other one you know if you had a deal to be outside and ready to go to work and somebody would pick you up and you pay for the gas and you're not outside ready to go to work you broke the contract okay and now they don't have to show up anymore and I don't even have to call you. You're the one who broke the contract. So then the next day, you're ready. You go out there. You're waiting for your ride. No ride shows up. You call them up. Hey, man, what happened? What do you mean what happened? I can ask you the same thing. What happened to you the day before? Dude, I don't have time to come to your house, sit outside for 15 minutes. You're not out there ready to go. I have better things to do. Let's face it. You didn't pay for my gas that day. I ain't driving to your house. If you're not going to be out there ready. It's real simple. We had a deal. You broke it. You know. And this is how it should all be looked at. All of it. You know. you don't. I don't care if it's your husband or your wife. Or your best friend. Or anybody. It doesn't matter. Your kids. No. They have a God in their heart too. And sometimes they have to hear things from you. The way you would say it. So that's why they've been 
compelled to call you and ask you something that need to hear it from you. No, it's not going to happen. Sorry. You know, especially if it's a family member because they tend to uh, take advantage. It's easier to fall into that story or a special person. You know, it's, oh, well, sure. Or I would love to help you. What do you need? You know, I need a right to work. Okay, well, I'll give you a right to work. And no boundaries were set. So you give them the right to work. And then the next day they're not ready or anything else. You never set any boundaries. You know, I'll be there at eight. Be outside and we'll head out. So in the 3D, you you keep your mouth shut. It's yes, no, I don't know, fill in the blank until you can go back and take counsel with the one in your heart. That's the much better approach. But there are times when things are going to come trippingly off the tongue and they weren't necessarily bad. If you're only telling the person things that have been presented, you're not judging. That's enlightened reason. Look, I came to your house. We had a deal. I came to your house. I waited 15 minutes. You weren't out there. I went home. Nobody paid for that gas. I'm not wasting my time and money that way. Okay. I agreed to do something for you. You didn't keep up your end of the agreement. This contract is broken. I'm not taking you home. So I hope this helps. You know, if you would like more or, you know, need more, just let me know in the comments below. But when you're outside, it's impersonal. And when you're inside, it's you leave the outside outside. That's the role. Okay. If you're being the president of the hospital, when you're outside, when you get home, he stays outside. Now you're daddy. Now you're husband. Now you're something else. So I hope this helps. Blessings to you. And thank you. Thank you for being you. There would be only one thing worse. And that would be if, knowing what you two are, knowing what you two have, and knowing what you two feel, you didn't get married.